the veil was without a seam. It separated the congregation from the priests. It covered the doorway to the Holy of Holies. And when Yeshua died, it was torn in two by the Father. Adonai, the Almighty God, was indicating that the Old Testament priesthood was no longer necessary. And now the people could come directly to God through the great high priest, Jesus. Nothing would separate them now. There are no earthly mediators between God and man. I am your pastor, but I am not a priest. I do not hold you back from Jesus. I do not say you must come to me in order to find him. And that there is no other way and entrance, but first, I am the mediator. I don't say that. Why? Because I'm not. You have a mediator, one that goes between the Father and you, and it's Yeshua, Jesus, your great high priest. But then he calls you guys priesthood, heirs, holy, perfect in his sight. So I want to know today, I want to know what names there's 12 tribes of Israel written on the ephod that the priests carry. I want to know what names are on your ephod. Everybody has an ephod. You have people you pray for. No, this is not prayer beads. These are names. Is that a little red one? That's the Morris and Hearts and Dawson's. They're on my ephod. My kids are on the very bottom one. See that P and that M? Pastors and ministers. Now, I don't have one for everybody or that chain would be pretty long. But sometimes I have to remind myself that this connection puts me in touch with you guys. Everybody here has an ephod. It's the people they pray for once a day, twice a week. Who is on your ephod? If you had 12 stones placed on your chest and in your heart, I want to know who it is. Who made it to the ephod? You know, there was one woman this is really interesting. Uh, uh, this is a confession, and that person does not know that. I'm saying it. Years ago, I fell in love with this lady at Trinity. I still carry those names on my Eva. And some of you, some of those same people, they're all sitting here. You just never left my Eva. And I looked across, and I look at you. You're still on my ephod. What about the person who decides, I don't want to be on your ephod anymore. I don't like it that you correct me. So I'm going to leave your ephod. Do they ever? Does your kid ever stop being your kid, even when they're obnoxious? See that little bottle of green stone that says kids on it? When God writes your name on his hand and on the palm of his hand, you are permanently on his ephod. And it says no one will snatch you out of my hand. Now you, you can. If you want to crawl out of his hand, you just go right ahead. I mean, I know the story of the prodigal son. I know that people have said to me, oh, I, I know I gave my life to him when I was little, but I don't want anything to do with him now. And they left. But I don't know that he didn't keep them right here in his ephod. Please bring him back. Holy Spirit, please draw him back. 
Please draw him back. Please draw him back. I don't want, when that day comes, that judgment day, I don't want to have to turn my back and say, I didn't know them. And they didn't know me. I don't want that. And he keeps them right here.